and your party, your companions, have spent a long, hard day on the road from Galdaneth. The weather is clear for now, but dark clouds on the horizon herald an inevitable storm. Your party's druid, naturally in tune with the ebb and flow of the magics of the natural world, tells your party that the storm will break within the hour. You need to find shelter. It doesn't take long before all of you come upon a cheery little roadside tavern built of hardwood planks and with stone pillars on either side of the door. The windows are made of colorful stained glass, so it's difficult to see inside, but you can all hear the sounds of joyful music and full-bellied laughter. Your fighter, always itching for a good meal, strides boldly forward, but your rogue, a distrustful individual who has been burned by the affect of good cheer one too many times, darts ahead, insisting upon checking the tavern door for traps. Their nimble fingers make light, investigative work of the structure, when abruptly, they freeze. The tavern door is trapped. Your wizard waves an inquisitive hand and with wide eyes reveals to the party that the air is thick with enchantment magic. What do you do? I find that open-ended questions like that can really throw people for a loop sometimes. What do you do? It's, it's almost a harder question when the options seem limitless. How do you reach a conclusion that feels both satisfying and safe? And you know, adding another layer of complication to the mix is the fact that this is a group decision. Your druid and your fighter and your rogue and your wizard all kind of have to be on the same page. And you know, so do you, by the way, which who are you? I mean, personal preference, I would say either artificer or sorcerer, but you already have an intelligence caster in the party, and at the moment, your druid is probably the only healer, so I'm feeling pretty inclined to chuck a cleric into the mix, even if you wanted to multi-class. Oh my gosh, sorcerer, cleric, multi-class, oh, so much fun and awesome for character development. Not great if you're trying to min-max, though, so all things considered, I think we should call you a celestial warlock. Yes, okay, you are a celestial warlock. Are we all on the same page? Okay, that's more folks than I thought, but <laughs> for those of you who are still looking at me a little blankly, I kind of didn't think so. Thing is, I love Dungeons and Dragons, and a lot of other people love Dungeons and Dragons too. Wizards of the Coast, which is the company that makes and distributes D&D content, estimates that 50 million people worldwide play D&D. Sales of D&D materials, like how-to books and official subscriptions to online content, increased by 33% in 2020, following a six-year consecutive growth streak. And the prevalence of streamed D&D games, like Critical Role, Dimension 20, and High Rollers, have helped to inject elements of this iconic role-playing game, or RPG, into the popular vernacular, the pop culture vernacular, rather. So, this game is popular, and increasingly so. My question then is this. Why was I met with a few blank stares, as well as a few generous chuckles, when I spoke with some degree of specificity about sorcerers and warlocks and clerics? Let me ask another question. How many folks in this room self-identify as adults? Yeah, you know, you, you can vote, you pay taxes, your driver's license might be horizontal instead of vertical at this point. Might be. Uh, your, your decisions have consequences attached to them, you know. Adults. Yeah, yeah, okay, me too. I, I self-identify as an adult at this point in my life. There's a thing that happens as we grow up, and it's called the explore-exploit trade-off. The concept is pretty intuitive. Basically, it's that we, as thinking, rational, autonomous agents, learn as we go. And the more we learn about our environments, the more we put what we learn to use. So, for example, you can't know how much you hate black licorice, which literally at me, I think it is absolutely gross. You can't know that until you've explored, until you've tasted black licorice. 
And then once you've explored, once you have access to that information, I hate black licorice, you can exploit it. You can put it to use and avoid black licorice in the future, say. But the thing that happens as we become adults is that we tend to lean pretty hard on the exploit half of that equation. That once we've made that initial exploration, we don't like to explore much further, not usually. We are less inclined to try other flavors of licorice, even though they might be delicious, because staying away from all licorice seems safer. And you know, this is not by definition a bad thing. Self-preservation is something that we learn as we grow up too. I think one of the hallmarks of adulthood is the stakes attached to our decisions. You know, suppose a child tries playing soccer for the first time and they discover that they don't like it. It's not really a big deal. That child can take an art class tomorrow. If an adult starts a new career and they discover one month in that they are absolutely miserable, the process of changing course is far more involved. So in other words, it makes sense that we like to stick with what we know and with what makes us feel safe. By contrast, children who almost always know less about their environments than adults do tend to be far more exploratory than their grown-up counterparts. A 2021 study published in the International Journal of Cognitive Science sought to test just how this explore-exploit trade-off manifests in adults and children. And it discovered that children's exploratory behavior makes them better learners than adults, especially in environments that are complex and in situations where there are costs and risks. So, what does this have to do with Dungeons and Dragons and with our perplexed party still stuck at the trapped tavern door? Simple. Put yourself into the well-worn boots of that weary, waterlogged, celestial warlock. What do you do? In this situation, you and your friend don't know much about your environment. You don't have much information that you can exploit. And so, in one way or another, you have to explore. Now, we can all acknowledge that this is a world of fantasy and make-believe, yes, but the opportunity to flex that exploration muscle, that is real. Dungeons and Dragons and other RPGs that ask players to take on the role of thinking, feeling, autonomous people with wants and needs and goals and fears and motivations and desires. Games like this allow us to explore safely as adults. And by the way, we don't just have to explore our environments. We can explore ourselves, too. And I think that's the crux of it for me, personally. My artificer is selfish. And through him, I have learned a lot about what I value in interpersonal relationships. My sorcerer cleric is slowly becoming a risk taker. And through him, I have become far more comfortable with ambiguity and with questions that don't have concrete answers. And it's probably worth mentioning that both of these player characters are transgender men. And in that way, my Dungeons and Dragons games were safe places for me to investigate facets of personal identity without having to risk something like a big public coming out that I wouldn't be able to take back. Consider this. How often do you exploit? And how often do you explore? Are you the kind of person that makes time for imagination and play? And if you're not, I mean, if you're not the kind of person who prioritizes play, I get it. It can be so easy to glorify the grind and to brag about how much sleep we didn't get last night and how much work we got done last week. But because of that, a lot of us are defaulting to exploitation. And we might not be making enough space for exploration, for the chance to learn and grow and know ourselves better. 
So I urge you, learn everything you can about the Enchanted Tavern. Discover for yourself whether you're the kind of person who beats down the door or sneaks around back to find a kitchen staff entrance or wins over the barkeep with a wink and a charming smile. I hope you have fun. I hope you make dangerous decisions. I hope you try something absolutely harebrained that you don't think will work just to see what happens. And most of all, I hope that you and your whole adventuring party return to the real world better for it. But, I mean, it's your call. What do you do? Thank you.